because I'm a woman who's had an abortion. I'm a daughter of a woman who's had an abortion, and I believe that all women should be able to make the choice about their reproductive health. I'm scared for my rights. I'm scared for my life. I'm afraid that this patriarchal dictatorship that's in office right now is going to stay in office, and they're going to keep passing laws against my body. Why are you coming to the action today? Well, partially because of the Lacey Peterson um, ruling um, of a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and because my daughter, who was 15, was here when she was about 18 months old, and I thought it was time for her to come back to another one. And here we are. <laughs> that any woman who is harmed while pregnant, even if it's the first day of conception and something happens to the fetus, then um, it's a crime that basically says that a child has been harmed. So it's just a way to erode the safeguards of Roe v. Wade um, by giving precedence to the fetus over a human being. But to get that abortion, I started the procedures when I was 20. I had to be deemed legally insane in Massachusetts and in New Hampshire. I stood before a board and literally standing there with these men at this big table, questioning me to deem that I was actually really incompetent. Because my father was so violent, they felt that uh, it was a danger to tell my parents. So my uncle was made temporary guardian. I then went into Boston Lying In, which is now Brigham and Women's Hospital, or Brigham Hospital in Massachusetts, and was put into a maternity ward where all these people were having their babies. I didn't know what was going on. This nurse walks into the room, she pulls down the sheet, she has a straight razor, and she starts to shave me, and I screamed. No one had told me, and she said, shut up, you little whore, or we'll pluck you like a chicken. That was in 1967, spring, April of 1967. I've been in the emergency room, and when women came in a long time ago with attempted abortions, they were willing to do anything to themselves. And it was really a very terrifying experience, because these were desperate people looking for a solution. In 1963, I graduated 10 years late and went to uh, work in an emergency room in Manhattan. And in a single evening, I helped preside over the deaths of three women who had gotten illegal abortions. All of them Catholic, all of them married, all of them with other children, and all of them had been uh, trying self-sense abortions, and they all died. So I was able to talk to three husbands and two sets of children, and explain that mom wasn't coming home. And I've been marching around ever since.
our family path, our family planning policies of the United States that are making women around the world die as well. Right. Not just what right, happened here again. Withholding medical care and birth control and contraceptive information from women in countries just because abortion is included as one of the options. Mm -hmm. rule is um, a U.S. administration policy that was put into place under um, the current administration, under President Bush. It was also in place during the Reagan years and then, re and then repealed um, under President Clinton. What it does is essentially conditions the money that the U.S. government sends overseas to family planning programs and to other development programs um, and says if you talk about abortion or um, even with other money, even if you know you're funded with a with a clinic to talk about abortion through other money or through other funds, if you mention abortion or you mention um, family planning in some cases, um, you know condoms, other ways of having safe sex, we will the U.S. government will not give this family planning program or this clinic any money now. took control of Congress, there have been 205 actions that restrict our right to choose. The morning after pill, or EC as it's otherwise known, is just a form of birth control pill given in a certain dosage within five days of unprotected intercourse or rape for some women that can prevent pregnancy. Statistics show it can be up to 89% effective in preventing pregnancy if taken within the first three days. The morning after pill is very safe. It virtually has no contraindications. It's safe for everybody to use and it should be over the counter so that women can access it more easily when they need to. Recently, the FDA did not approve the morning after pill to be over the counter. They are afraid that teenagers will access, be able to access the morning after pill and therefore be more sexually promiscuous, which is false. <laughs> Women can access the morning after pill either through their emergency room at their hospitals or their local Planned Parenthood or hopefully their obstetrician gynecologist in the area too and through they just need to get a prescription and they can get it from a pharmacy.
voices will not be stifled. We will remain brave and angry as long as women's health and lives are in jeopardy. Reproductive freedom is a human right and friends, rights have no borders. Show me what a feminist looks like. This is what a feminist looks like. Show me what a feminist looks like. This is what a feminist looks like. Racism and sexism and classism is an inherent part of this march. I mean, it's, it's entrenched in it. People who are, people here are racist. People here are sexist. People here are classist. I mean, we all have that. Um, we all can have those things in us, I guess. But just because you're here and you're pro-choice doesn't mean you're anti-racist, doesn't mean you're anti-war. In fact, I had a friend who mentioned, where were all these people during the anti-war, um, anti-war demonstrations down here? And you would think that the politics of these people and anti-war people would be linked. But, you know, we're just talking about war on our bodies, and we need to be thinking about war on women's bodies everywhere. country with a health care crisis, a crisis that profoundly and directly affects women's lives. 87% of counties in the United States do not have a doctor that provides abortion services. That means one out of every three women live in a county with no abortion provider. There is a critical shortage of doctors and it is threatening to make what we know now as Roe versus Wade irrelevant. Only one of five medical schools includes education about basic options counseling in their curriculum. And even more appallingly, Viagra. Viagra receives more required class time on average than either contraception or abortion. Viagra. Abortion is one of the most common medical procedures, yet medical students are not being trained to provide them. marching along we're seeming so much more life affirming today than those with the bloody pictures shouting shame shame guilt guilt shame guilt Just said, trust women. I was just told that we have made history today with one million one hundred and fifty thousand marches. When I see a lot of people coming together to fight for something that's important, it gives me a little warm spot in my heart. It makes me feel good inside. It gives me hope for the human race.
pro-choice too. And I firmly believe that a woman's right to choose should not be decided on Capitol Hill in a smoke-filled room full of grumpy old rich guys. So let a woman's choice be 